Hi, I'm Andrew Pierce with Epics at Purdue. In this module, we're going to go through the Epics course structure and talk a little bit about how the course functions. Most students will take Epics for one or two credit hours. Some senior designer capstone students will be taking it for three, but you'll know who you are. Uh, so let's focus on these for now. So a one credit hour student is going to meet in lab with your team and your advisor and TA for a two hour lab once a week. Outside of lab, you'll work an average of about three and a half hours on your project. So that three and a half hours, you're not going to clock in and clock out or, or be checked, but we should see work in your notebook equivalent to about that much time. And it's really critical that you put that time in. Some students try to just come in for the two hour lab and, and not put in the time outside of class. And it really shows, and they're usually not very successful at, at creating anything that's useful for the community partner. Um, and then the, the last requirement for a one credit hour student is they're gonna do five, what we call professional development hours or PDHs per semester. So across the whole semester, you'll put in five hours uh, of time learning uh, the, the professional and technical skills that you need to be successful in the class. For a two credit hour student, you're gonna have that same two hour lab each week, uh, but instead of three and a half, you'll, you'll bump up to about five hours a week outside the, of the lab working on your project. And we really should see a tangible difference between a two credit and one credit student in terms of the work that you're getting done, um, either independently or in your small, um, small groups and project teams. And then instead of five, you'll have 10 of the PDHs or professional development hours per semester. Really critical throughout the class, and I'll repeat this several times, that you record all of your work in your notebook. Your notebook in Epics is very much like your exams in another course where, uh, it, you know, in a traditional course, you could study hard the whole semester and then not take your exam and you're gonna get an F. Likewise in Epics, if you work really hard all semester and you don't record anything in your notebook, we don't have any artifacts to grade you on and you won't be very successful. So make sure that you are doing a good job documenting throughout. So I mentioned there's a two hour lab meeting each week. What happens during that time? Um, so it's typically uh, in the lab meeting, your project manager and design lead will be taking the lead in the class and they'll be going through a status report. What, what we usually format as PIGs or progress issues and goals. So through the progress portion of that, you're gonna talk about what you got done over the last week, uh, you know, kind of celebrate your successes and show those to the class, right? Don't just say, hey, we got uh, item one, two, and three done, but do a demonstration. So if you created a CAD model, show that CAD model. If you did a uh, assessment of user needs, put those up on the board and show them. Whatever it might be, you know, show and tell your work during this time. You'll then talk about issues that the team had. So this is gonna be what didn't go right. So maybe uh, you had a setback in the project. <clears throat> maybe there was a, a technical shortcoming or maybe your team didn't have a resource they needed or maybe they didn't know how to do uh, a particular function of the, of the project. And you're going to discuss not just what those issues were, but how are you going to address them and solve them going forward? Uh, and then in the, the last one here uh, will be setting goals for the next week ahead and who's going to be responsible for those goals within your team. And you really want those to be as, as specific as possible. Uh, we often talk about smart goals and you may go over that in lab, but you're really looking for goals that, that are, are meaningful and rich and will help you to, to progress your project. And then throughout those pigs, your TA and advisor will give you coaching and feedback and mentorship on uh, you know, how you could do a better job, how you could work through your issues and help you set better goals for the week ahead. After PIGS, which should take, uh, you know, no more than the first half an hour of class, should leave you about an hour and a half to break out into your small group project teams and actually work on your projects and make progress. And you have all of the Epics Lab resources available to you during that time. And usually your TA or advisor will, will sort of cycle around between the teams and, and help you out as you go. So when you're working outside the lab, what do you need to get done during that time? It's really all about making progress toward your project completion. So during the lab, you've set some goals, and then when you're outside the lab, you're gonna be working to try and complete those goals. So that may be doing some kind of background research, it may be actively doing design work, it might be spending time in your community, but this is where you're really making the project happen and, and getting it done. You need to make sure that you put all of that work into your notebook, and you'll also each week have a reflection to complete. And a reflection is going to be looking at what happened during the week and the experiences you had, trying to connect them with your broader learning and think about how you could improve as you, as you go forward. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in detail later. 
during that time outside the lab, you'll do communications with your project partner. So if that's um, doing phone calls or emails with them to try and get the information that you need to be successful. Um, and then your TA and your advisors and all of the Epic staff are available to you all the time, including outside the lab through Microsoft Teams. So you can send us uh, chats, you can do video or voice calls through Teams. Um, so we're all available to you all the time and make use of those resources. Okay, so that kind of walked through what a typical week looked like. If we look at the semester as a whole, there are really four main milestone points that are gonna be important. The first one is week four. And during week four, you're gonna submit your team budget. This is gonna be a line item list of all the things that you expect to have to buy in order to create your prototypes for your, your project this semester. Um, that gets turned in week four, and after that, you can start to make those major purchases. You can make some small minor ones beforehand, um, and you can change the items as the semester goes by, but your budget's gonna set your maximum spend unless your financial officer submits a revised budget and requests more money. You're also gonna turn in a project plan. It's usually in the form of a Gantt chart, which is gonna be a listing of all the tasks that you think you need to get done through the semester to get to your end goal point and who's responsible for each of those tasks and when you think they'll get done. And then the last piece is gonna be some individual feedback on your notebook. So your TA will let you know if you're on the right track with respect to the work and accomplishments and the reflections that you're documenting to that point. The next big milestone is during week seven, which is our midterm design review. During design review, we invite guest reviewers from across the university and uh, across local industry to come in and evaluate your projects and give you really critical feedback to help make sure that your designs are gonna be useful and successful for the community. The design reviewers are great at giving you quality feedback to help you progress along the way. You'll also submit your individual documentation for midterm grading. So this will include the individual evaluation rubric, conducting peer reviews, and also review your team's design document, which is the overall project document and your individual notebooks. And in the subsequent couple of weeks, you'll receive your midterm grades and give you a further evaluation and, and feedback on what you could do better in the class. At week 12 will be the third point that we're gonna give you some individual feedback on your notebook to make sure from the feedback we gave you at midterm, which is a really formal feedback where we'll sit down with each student individually and talk about your strengths and weaknesses through that week seven feedback to week 12, we'll say, okay, we've asked you to make these corrections. Are you going in the right direction? And then finally at week 16, we'll do another design review, really cap the semester, and then you'll submit all of your final documentation for grading at the end. Okay, so we talked a little bit in the last slide about design reviews, just to give you a little bit more context on those. Again, they're held at the midterm and at the end of the semester. And they're really there to allow students to present their project to our guest reviewers to get feedback and make sure that you're giving a quality deliverable to your partner. The design reviews are formal presentations. So make sure that you're providing quality visual aids, make sure your slides are clean, clear, and concise, and that you don't have visual aids that can't be read. We oftentimes get students that put uh, big Excel tables or things like that that they can't understand. And keep in mind that your audience is mixed. So some of the people may be highly technical and might understand if you put in a code or a, a circuit diagram, but they also may not be. And so think about presenting to your audience in a way that everyone can understand the material you're presenting. Uh, make sure that you practice your design review slides as a team. It really shows when teams haven't practiced and it really doesn't go very well. So I encourage you strongly to take the time to practice your reviews together as a team. Uh, and then last, you're really representing Purdue the EPICS program and yourselves through these design reviews. So make sure that you are being professional in your conduct and in your attire. And we really expect at least business casual dress code for that week. Okay, another big component of the class is the professional development hours. We mentioned those briefly earlier. Um, the required PDHs, if you're a first time student, uh, are going to be in Brightspace. This is the first of those PDHs. So if you found this one, you're probably on the right track. Um, the elective PDHs can be found in Simplicity. They may not be listed until the end of week one, uh, but those are gonna give you an idea of the things that are available to you as elective PDHs. So do you need to do the required or the elective? Really comes down to how many credit hours you're taking the class and whether it's your first time taking EPICS or if you're returning for your second or third or fourth or fifth semester. So if you're a first time student, you have to do the five required PDHs. 
That is this module, as well as three modules on the design process and one about ethics and community awareness. If you are a two credit hour student, you're gonna to have to take those five required PDHs if it's your first time, as well as five additional electives. If you're a returning student, you're gonna do all elective PDHs and you'll do five per credit hour that you're enrolled. So it's pretty straightforward. If you're a first time student, I strongly recommend you do the five, the five required PDHs early in the semester. We always have some students that wait till the very end of the semester and do them at the end. And they're all about how to do well in this course. So if you do them at the end, they're not gonna be very useful to you. So strongly encourage you to go ahead and do them in the first few weeks of the semester. Okay, we've talked a lot also about leadership in EPICS, and there are a number of team roles that you could take on throughout your semester in EPICS. Uh, the first is gonna be the project manager. The project manager is really like the lead student for the team. So they're gonna be kind of like the quarterback, if I can use a, a sports analogy here for American football. They're gonna be out on the field with a team, calling the plays and leading what's going on on the field where your TA and advisor are gonna be more like the coaches on the sideline. So they won't be out on the field with you doing the design work. They're gonna be giving you feedback and advice and helping you to be more successful along the way. The next student role is gonna be a design lead. And you'll have one design lead typically per project. And most teams have about three projects, but it can vary. So those design leads are gonna be the sort of technical lead and they're gonna be sort of the, the leadership or mentor for their small project group. The next one is gonna be our financial officer. Financial officer is in charge of submitting the team budget and then helping the team with purchase requests where you actually buy the materials they need and tracking that budget to make sure that they're not overspending. Uh, the financial officer is also going to be in charge of submitting grant requests, which is a great experience to get uh, as an undergrad as well. The next one is a project partner liaison. You may have one or you may, if you have multiple partners, you may have more than one of those. And the project partner liaison is the primary student who communicates with your community partner. So most community partners don't want six or seven different students emailing them and calling them with maybe redundant questions or getting the lines crossed. It's a lot easier for them if they have one student who's the primary point of contact. Uh, so your, your community uh, partner or project partner liaison is gonna be you know, one of your outgoing students that's a good communicator and gonna really make sure that clear communications are happening with the partner. Um, the next is gonna be your communications officer. Uh, so communications officer is in charge of your team website, making sure that gets updated um, on a regular basis and reflects the work that you're doing. And they'll also run the team's social media accounts. So most teams have at least a Twitter account. And then uh, finally, they'll help with student to student or peer recruiting. So as you look around your team at what students you need for the next semester in terms of the different disciplines, they can help recruit those. And then last but not least is our project archivist. So the project archivist is gonna be responsible for making sure that all of the team's documentation is clear and complete and that all of the team's file storage is clear and well organized. It doesn't mean they have to do all of the documentation for the team, but their job is to really coordinate it and make sure that it's got good quality control. So in summary, everyone needs to make sure that you're attending your lab meeting every week. That's really the most critical point of attendance. Um, and it is required for the course and will be factored in your grade. So if there's a really legitimate reason why you can't attend lab, uh, make sure you're letting your advisor and TA know that. Uh, you really have to work outside the lab time to be successful. You can't just show up for the two hour lab and expect to get your project done. You have to complete the required PDHs, so make sure that you're getting those done, um, whether you are doing the electives as a returner or the required ones as a new student. And again, leadership opportunities and epics are abundant. Make sure you take advantage of those. It's really a great opportunity for you to develop your skills.